Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, module checking of SDL systems uh, and uh, the technology we use to, uh, to, to do that. Um, so first an introduction because I'm not sure everybody is familiar with uh, SDL. So SDL is, uh, stands for Specification and Description Language. It's uh, started from the International Telecommunication Union and it was uh, aiming at describing telecommunication uh, protocols and, and it has been used by uh, different uh, organizations to, for example, to describe uh, uh, 3G or uh, even before X25, which I don't know if you're familiar with these protocols, so it has been uh, quite widely used in uh, telecommunication, but also in other domains uh, uh, where you need uh, to be precise in the description of interaction between entities, like telecommunication protocols. Uh, so it has, it's also used in uh, uh, space and, uh, and defense industries uh, because it's, it's quite precise, it is a, a, quite a strong uh, semantic. It's completely asynchronous. Uh, it's based on messages. You exchange messages, and uh, you you don't wait for. You can wait for an answer, but I mean, you're not you're not stuck waiting for an answer. It's, it's not like a MATLAB, which is synchronous, where you have to wait for uh, the, the operation to complete. You can, you can send a, send a message, and then you wait for an an, an answer as a state machine. Uh, there's uh, there are data types within SDL. Uh, so you can have counters, you can have arrays, you can have floats and everything. That's sometimes the discussion we had uh, this morning, uh, maybe you can consider SDL as a, almost a programming language because you have all these action language or data types within it. Uh, but still it was not meant to be uh, a programming language, but it was meant to be precise enough so that if you read the model, there is no uh, interpretation possible, okay? Everybody understand the same behavior, okay? Um, so that, that's very important, huh? the, 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 the behavior of the model is, is, is properly defined by, by, by the standard itself. Um, so uh, I, I, uh, I'm the CEO and, uh, of, and founder of, of Pragmadev, and, and Pragmadev, what we have is we have a tool based on STL, and among other things, we have an SDL uh, executor. So we can execute SDL models. You can do step by step in a model and see if we have variables inside, we can see what's, what, what's going on inside. So when you have an executable modeling language, an executable model, it's very tempting to explore the model automatically, what we call model checking. Okay. So the basic idea is uh, have a machine try all possible path of execution and maybe find some problems uh, like deadlocks maybe you can verify properties or you can also do some model based testing based on some target you know maybe I want to cover that symbol you know, uh, build a, a scenario that goes to that uh, symbol yeah. or maybe you have some uh, error situation like, you know uh, divide by zero things execution errors. So there are a lot of motivation to uh, work on, on, uh, on model checking. Um, now, because it's message-based, it's asynchronous, it, it has implicitly uh, a huge number of possible states. Uh, so what I call state is not one state of one finite state machine, it's the overall state. So it's the combination of all the states of all the state machines with the value of the variables, with the pending messages and everything. Okay, that's the global state. So each time you execute something, you move in into that state space, and you, when you do the model checking, you do the state space exploration. Uh, so if you want to explore everything, you want to explore any order of messages, any value of parameters, and also there's another issue is that these models, actually they never end. They keep running all the time. You know, it's like a telecommunication protocol. It's always on, okay? It keeps going. Um, so uh, you understand from, from the start, it's quite, it's quite tricky by nature. Uh, so what we did, uh, we've been doing that for quite some time, trying to uh, different uh, technologies, um, is uh, to uh, do some uh, what we call, well, basic exploration. It's like, okay, we'll try all the values. 
okay, basically. And we let the tool uh, try to simplify things and, oh, I've been there before, so I can cut, cut that path and so on. Uh, and we also try the symbolic execution. So symbolic execution is different, is that you're looking into the model and then you know what are the interesting values to, uh, to explore. So you won't explore them all, you just explore a few of them, okay? Um, and what we have uh, tried recently, and what I will present here in, in more detail, is the uh, language agnostic exploration. We have done with uh, Insta Montagne. Uh, Cyprian, Cyprian is here, so <laughs> he, is, he can answer all the detailed questions about that. Um, so uh, if I go back to uh, the main issues we had when we did some experiments, um, first, um, if you use uh, a tool uh, that is specialized in model checking, uh, they usually have their own language. Okay? Uh, even though the language might be very close to what, uh, what you have in your modeling language, like SDL or anything else, uh, it's not the same. So you will ha always have some issues to translate your concepts to the concept of the new language. So that's one issue. You're not sure that what you're exploring in the uh, uh, model checking tool is conformed to what you have uh, put in your, in your model. Uh, and sometimes some constructs are basically not translated. So it's not, it's not easy. Uh, so that's really, uh, that's really a, a big issue uh, when, you, when you have to translate to a, another tool. Uh, same thing if you do symbolic execution. Uh, you have to sort of translate the model anyway into some representation. Um, and um, it's sometimes very difficult to, to translate some concepts. And anyway, the complexity of analyzing the model as a big equation is very high. We thought it would be simpler, but actually it's as complex as exploring all the states in the state space. Um, so because we have issues when you ex explore, uh, you try to reduce the state space. Uh, but if you translate to another language, a model checking language notation, uh, you do the state space reduction in that language, mm -hmm. not in the source language you wrote your model with. So um, it's, it's, it's a bit of a, of a problem. Or you, or you have to modify your source model, and that's not something you want to do either, because you're modifying your model. So you don't want to do that. Um, in a previous project, uh, we uh, worked with uh, OBP2, uh, uh, so that's the tool from uh, Insta, Insta Bretagne, and, and they, their approach was very different. Uh, because what they do is they, re they don't have their own execution engine, they rely on the execution engine of the source model. So they have to interact with the execution engine. Uh, they ask uh, I'll, I'll show you the, the interface. They, they interact with the execution engine. Um, and we thought, oh, well, that's, that's quite interesting because then there's no uh, misinterpretation of the model. It's, it's, it's my model. Uh, there's no uh, misinterpretation uh, of the uh, execution semantics. And even if I have some, maybe some execution semantics uh, interpretation or from our tool, well, it will stay uh, valid there. Um, and we tried that on uh, BPMN models, business uh, process model notation models, which are quite simple because they don't have uh, data in them, so the, the, the number of states is quite, is quite reduced. Uh, but it was uh, quite uh, satisfactory, so, so we thought, okay, well, we'll try, try that on uh, SDL models, which are, which are quite more complex, and we'll see how it goes. So maybe the, uh, that's the interface uh, between the uh, executor. So it can be any model executor. Right? So in that case, it's our SDL uh, model executor and the uh, observer-based prover, because that's what it stands for, <laughs> OBP. Uh, and actually, uh, so OBP uh, actually asks for the, uh, the model executor, what, what is the, the, the state? of the model, so the, the overall state. And the idea is that OBP can ask the executor, can you go back to that state, please? Because when you do exploration, you go one branch, and then you go back, and then another branch, and you explore like this. So OBP is driving the executor. 
let's say it's setting the states what are the viable execution um, the possible transition to execute okay execute this one or this one and then maybe go back to another state and, and so on um, and OBP can evaluate properties uh, so we use a property sequence chart uh, to express the properties uh, but again OBP will uh, not evaluate the atomic properties it will ask the executor to evaluate the atomic properties it will evaluate complex properties that combines these atomic properties okay so that when you travel in the uh, state space uh, it will uh, um, evaluate the overall property um, so what the, the, still we had some some uh, state space explosion issues okay it's not because we use a uh, uh, our own execution tool that uh, we, we have resolved that. So we still have the, this issue. Um, so first, uh, we had to deal with the uh, instances because when you have dynamic uh, process creation, like you have in SDL, you create a process, it dies, and you recreate one, uh, but uh, the PID of the process is not the same. So the state, the overall state is not considered to be the same, but actually it's the same. <coughs> PID doesn't matter actually, okay? What matters is the state within the, 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 the process I have just created, uh, the, the pending messages or maybe the value of the variables. So we had to sort these uh, out. First, sort by name, sort by state, sort by value of variables and so on, you know? And then assign automatically PIDs, so that if you create, delete, and recreate a process, you will find the same state because they are equivalent. So that was one of, of the of the thing we did. Um, the other the other thing is that um, when you send messages with parameters, uh, not all the values of the parameters are interesting. Okay, it could be evaluated automatically I mean you could go into the model and see you know is that value used somewhere you know if if not maybe get rid of it but sometimes it's very tricky because um, you need a full analysis a full understanding of, of the model so what we did uh, first is, is we said okay we'll let the modeler decide which values are uh, interesting okay he wrote the model so he knows Okay. But we don't want the model to be to be modified. Mm -hmm. So we so we have like a configuration panel for the exploration, and we say, okay, this parameter, you don't have to try all values. Maybe you can try four values out of this, this integer. Okay. Uh, so that reduces, of course, a lot of the of the state space. Uh, also, you have uh, what we call uh, uh, irrelevant variables within the model. So it's not in the incoming messages, but within the model. So maybe, for example, you have a, a, a counter in a loop. Uh, this, this is not really relevant to the, to the overall state. Okay? You make a, a loop. At the end of the loop, the counter has a different value, but it doesn't really matter uh, for, for, the, for the overall state. So th these are all these uh, things you can configure and say, OK, this is not relevant and so on. Uh, another thing is the. Um, to limit the number of messages that could come in. Because in theory, when you have a message queues, you can add message queues in your queue forever. <coughs> and it's a different state. But it's not really interesting, OK? So we, uh, we you can limit the number of messages in the queues. And you can also say the messages inside the model have priority over the messages coming out. Uh, external from the model. Uh, and last, how do we end exploration? So the, okay, the easy one is we don't have anything else to do. Or we have already met a state. So we know we have already explored that, uh, that state. We have reached the maximum number of messages. We've we detected a deadlock. Uh, execution error, uh, you know, like a variable badly assigned or uh, improper value or maybe you outbound of, a, of an array or something like that. Our property is violated, of course. Uh, it's also something we, we are interested in. And in any case, a scenario will be generated to go back a path that will 
lead to uh, one of these problems and you can uh, then analyze. So we tried it on a, we implemented that and tried it on a simple use case. So that's the, uh, the, 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 the demo example, the access control system. Um, so it's a system where you, uh, you know, you have a, a lock uh, on a door and you slide your card, you have a pin code and you're allowed to get in or not. So that's, that's basically it. So the inputs are a card with a card ID and, and a pin code with uh, three or four digits. Uh, uh, so it's, it's quite simple, but actually if you combine all these uh, parameters, uh, for example, the card ID can be quite big. So if you want to try all the card IDs, which is not very interesting actually, uh, you can create a huge amount of states, which are quite useless. Um, but uh, so we thought it, it was a good scenario because it's quite small, quite simple, but still has, has some uh, problems uh, in the sense it's, it has enough complexity uh, to, to, uh, to, to do that. So th that's what it looks like in SDL. Uh, if you can see the, the, the channel going to the environment and the two uh, messages coming in, and the two messages have uh, um, the parameters described in the, in, the, in the data types. And you configure, you, you limit the number of incoming messages and the values of the parameters. So you say, for example, here the card, you only have four different cards and only three messages of these four different cards. And also the, 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 the keys you can type in is well, zero, one, two, three. So it's only four values. You don't go up to nine. It doesn't bring any value to, to this. Um, so we tried uh, that, uh, and, and since we already had uh, an, um, an export to IF, uh, which is the, the format for uh, the tool from uh, Verimag, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but uh, they do, uh, they've been doing model checking for, for a very long time. And uh, so, so it was a good reference value to, to see uh, if, if the, the number of, of, of <coughs> states explored was, uh, was valid. So you can see it's, it's, it's similar. So it's not exactly the same. And that's mainly because uh, if the, the format for, for, for very light is using what they call observers. And an observer is something you add to the state machine. And it actually uh, creates states because you, it adds a new state machine as an observer to your model. So it, it creates actually uh, uh, more states. <coughs> so you see it's quite similar uh, and the other one we, we tried it with a <laughs> symbolic tool uh, from the CEWA in, uh, in Paris and the uh, number was uh, only a few thousand which is uh, quite good uh, but as I said if you uh, increase the complexity of the model it uh, it has uh, some some trouble uh, for, for for analysis, and also there are some concepts we have a very hard time to translate into their uh, representation. <coughs> oh, sorry. So as a conclusion, so as I said, the system is uh, has not been modified at all. It's uh, the same model. The execution engine is the one you use to verify the model was correct. <clears throat> the results we have are comparable to uh, other mature technologies. Um, and the thing is, it's quite easy to take in hand because you, you stay within the same tool, okay? It's, uh, you don't have to go out to another tool and uh, learn maybe how it works or how you configure it. The other language. So it looks very promising and we have tried it on a toy model <coughs> and we're waiting to experiment it on a real model. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs>